Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. I want to do a quick video, and I do mean quick, that will talk just briefly about the lit review feedback. All of those are now in, well, the ones that are in, I've sent back out with my feedback on those. And I want to highlight sort of the common things that I was noticing, because some of it is specifically relevant to the lit review, but other parts are going to be relevant to the rest of the entire paper. So um, here's what I have for you. Let me move some things around. Okay, so first of all, many people were using quotation marks, and I think it was to show emphasis. So that's pretty common, but there's a different way you need to do that with APA. So <clears throat> if it's a real quotation, you'll want to cite the page number. Always put a page number with quotation marks. Those two just always go together. If you're using that for emphasis, you simply want to you know, let the reader know that you're either being facetious or you're being extra serious or you want them to hear it different when they read it. For that, use italics. And so you see the difference there in the examples. Not only does this, the theory explain what is happening, it also applies it to real situations. And those might be actual words that were used in that description from Smith. So there it is on page four. But if you just want your words to be heard and the reader to hear those as not only does the theory explain what is happening, it also applies it to real situations. Then you want to use your italics. So be careful with that one. The key thing there is quotation marks always have a page number. Number two, there's no need to cite the same source subsequently without an interruptive source or a source coming between the two uses. So the top one is the incorrect one. Anderson, 2020, found that humans are natural communicators. In fact, it was noted that, quote, humans are storytellers. Anderson, 2020, page four. Lessons, parables, and proverbs are all stories that are used to teach. This kind of teaching seems to fit the human notion of learning quite well, Anderson 2020. Like, wow, Anderson getting all the credit. But in fact, you don't need to do all that. Uh, one thing to, to note, whenever you use information from a source, cite it right away, right? So it, it doesn't go at the bottom. Like, you don't want to have it sort of appear like at the end and all of this information came from, no. You want it at the top. As soon as you use anything from a source, cite that source. And so Anderson 2020 found that humans are natural communicators. In fact, it was noted that humans, quote, humans are storytellers. Just page four because it comes from the same source that was just cited. And then I don't need to cite Anderson again at the end because it was there. I mean, that's the same source. We assume what you're saying is either from your own, in your own words, or it is coming from Anderson since they were the last source cited. Uh, speaking of citing things, number three, claims must be cited. Now, read carefully your own work when you're, you're thinking about, did I make a claim? So if you say, like, people are known to be storytellers, that's a, that's a statement, that's a claim that you're making, and you'll need to back that up. Unless it is something considered common knowledge, um, you, you really need to back everything up. So, you know, men and women do certain things different ways or uh, people think about social media in different ways. Back that up. You need some, some literature out there. And that's what this is all about, the lit review. So, you know, if you don't want to make a hard claim and you want to speak in your own voice, do what's called a hedge. In other words, don't say people always feel like or they never feel like. All right, welcome back. Sorry about that. Had a phone call to get my refrigerator fixed. Uh, where were we? Yep. Yeah, so hedging is is the way to get around making hard claims that need to be cited. So instead of saying people always act this way, you can say often people blank. Or instead of um, every time this happens, this is the result. Or many times when this happens, this is the result. Number four, when you're doing a lit review, move away from the annotated bibliography style or sound. So instead of like X and Y found that, or according to ENG, your job, your job really becomes the consolidator. You're synthesizing is what the, the technical term is. All this information and then putting it out in a way that is 
easy to digest for your reader or easier than reading all these different articles. That's what you did for this assignment. So um, what you probably want to avoid is this top example here that says Anderson 2000 found that humans learn well from listening to stories. Frazier 2018 also found that humans are used what well, use stories to teach both young and old learners. Meanwhile, Smith in 2016 states that, quote, stories are the way we make sense of the world, in quote, page 345. Instead, say it, say it differently. Humans learn well from listening to stories, Anderson 2000, at all ages, Frazier. In fact, throughout our lives, we use stories to understand what is happening in the world around us, Smith 2016. So you'll want to use fewer long quotations, don't try to try to move away from those. It doesn't mean you have to eliminate them. Sometimes something is just said just right. But remember that in over, I think, 40 words, you need to have a block quotation. And you don't want more than one or two of those in a paper at most. Um, so if you can avoid those, do so. Uh, number five, with research questions, avoid what's known as double-barreled questions or those that predict the future. So to, for the future first, some folks were writing things like, will social media change the way we communicate? We, we don't know. We don't know. It, I mean, it probably will, right? But we can't tell the future. So instead, we could say, has social media changed the way we communicate? There is you know, a way to do some predictive analytics. So we could do what's called a linear regression analysis. And it'll tell us predictors that will be the biggest factors in the future but it's still even with that in our kind of line of, of research in social science it won't give us this predictive situation like you know statistics might i mean i know we use statistics but let me explain so uh, march madness just started right or it's getting ready to start and so with that you could run the statistics about you know team history points per game opponent points per game strength of schedule and put that all together in a program and that will spit out the likelihood of a team winning and that's a way of predicting the future we can't do that with human behavior in terms of uh, social science topics and so we, we don't want to try to do too much through this research what we can do is tell you what is happening or what has happened and that is what we need to focus on also with the double-barreled questions Instead of saying things like, has social media changed the way we communicate specifically through nonverbal messages? Well, in that question, you're, you're assuming that it has changed the way we communicate. Now, if you can back that up, then you can just take that out and just say, how has social media changed the way we communicate through nonverbal messages? So, you know, you want to split that up at least. So first question, has it changed the way we communicate? Second question, if it has how is it done it through nonverbal messages? So always try to split those out so that you have simple, simple questions. And it may mean that you have six research questions instead of, you know, three, but still it's no more work. It's the same amount of work. It's just clearer for the reader to follow and for you to, to write. A couple pro tips, things that I noticed. So um, one of my professors in my PhD program marked down my grade on a paper half a point out of 10 points every time I used the word usage or utilize and it was just I think the note on the paper seriously said something like um, don't be a pretentious prick say use um, and so ever since then I have <laughs> so use uh, is the way to go instead of utilize or usage I asked him about it and he said yeah only people that use usage and utilize are people that aren't smart but try to be uh, so don't do that. I'm not saying that's the case with you because you didn't know, but now you know. So you're a smart person, so you can just say use. Another one is on one hand or on the other hand. What happens here frequently is that people will make a, a statement and then they will say on the other hand, and I get that. However, in writing, if you're going to say on the other hand, first, at some point before then, you need to say on one hand. So on one hand, this has pretty good outcomes for the group. But on the other hand, there are some drawbacks. So you'll want to make sure you use those as a pair, as a set, and not you know, one or the other. And then last, go ahead and cut out things like I believe that or I think that, because this is your paper. And if it's not cited to someone else, then we assume it's you speaking. So you obviously think it or believe it. 
So you can just cut that out and that will clean up some paper. Uh, number seven, with APA, don't forget to use your resources. Absolutely, you can use the APA's website and manual. It's good. I keep a copy of it close, but the Al Purdue site is the best online resource. Uh, they've caught some flack recently because they now have a automatic citation generator. I'm telling you right now, don't use that. Um, let, me, let me take that back. Use that, but then double check it to make sure that it did it correctly because I can't tell you how many times it gets it off just, just a little bit. And it could be that you put an extra space in. It could be that something wasn't capitalized correctly. It could be a lot of things, but you need to be responsible for your sources and your citations. So make sure that you're doing that. A couple other quick things I noticed. Um, there has to be a colon in the title of a paper with APA. Uh, so make sure that you've got one of those. It's just, you know, thinking about it a little different, like up here, literature reviews, general feedback. So if yours was, um, Communication has communication been impacted by social media? Then you might say impacts of communicate impacts of social media, human communication or uh, human communication colon the impacts seen from social media something along those lines. Um, the second thing is that when you use quotation marks, for example, you want the punctuation to go inside those, not outside. It's small, but it's important. Last up here, just a couple terms that I think people were maybe missing or confused on. So a lot of folks talked about interpersonal communication, and that just means between people. And you're right that talking online is a form of interpersonal communication. However, we usually think of interpersonal communication as a face-to-face -face exchange. If we are using a tool to communicate, whether that's a bullhorn, a phone, a computer, you name it, we call that mediated communication or mediated interpersonal communication. So just know that there are things like mediators that mediate and that results in mediated communication. So I just want you to be accurate with your language. The next thing is causal relationships. There were a few folks that were making claims without citing that said, you know, every time this happens, then this other thing happens or this causes that to happen. And we don't want to be that forward. It's really hard to chew or prove a causal relationship. In fact, um, you can't legally say that cigarettes cause cancer. Do we know that they do? Yup. Can the science prove it with, with on a, a shadow of a doubt? No, they can't. They can say that smoking cigarettes contributes to the likelihood of the development of cancer, but they can't say it causes it because that's a causal relationship. And that takes a lot of evidence to to make. Uh, last, understand that there can be correlations between things. You've probably heard correlation is not causation. Um, and that is just what it sounds like, right? I mean, just because there is a strong correlation, number of the more you smoke, the more likely you are to develop cancer. That's true, but that's a correlation and it doesn't get to the level of causation, which is the next step up. Um, we could say things like, Gravity causes objects that go up in the sky to come back down to earth. We can say that because that's not a theory. That's a law of science. And so with those, it's a little different. But for us, generally speaking, if we can avoid extreme statements in terms of this always does this, this causes that, this never happens, everybody, if you can just eliminate those sorts of, of usages from your, your writing, you'll be in a much better place. All right, those were just some observations I had. Again, your feedback has now um, been sent to you. So check it out. Let me know if you have questions. And uh, this week is week nine. Let me pull up your syllabus while we're all here together. And you will note that this week uh, you have an assignment due, and that is the method section. So... The idea for this week is to collect some data, uh, but your method section is due. So this is when you're going to write up the steps to your study. And if you didn't watch the video last time, go back and watch that when we talked about it. But the key thing to remember is write this in a way that's like a recipe. If someone wanted to 
make or do your research just the way you did it, they need enough information in the methods section to do that. So don't skimp on details. It's easier to take some detail out later than it is to add it in and remember exactly where it goes and make it coherent. So walk us through your process step by step and that will help you understand what you're about to do for the actual data analysis and it will help others understand what has been done or what they need to do if they want to repeat it. All right, so with that in mind, that's all. There's no new video this week other than the one you're watching now. Next week, I'll make a video and post about results and analysis. But until then, as always, let me know if you have questions. And I hope you have a wonderful week.